And that is her done. Last thing that I want to do is just remove the masking tape. And hold it in. Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Now this PDF book is an older but a godder. I recently downloaded the PDF version off Hannah Lynn's website. It's the Mythical Maidens um, book. Now I have got this as a book but I'm still kicking myself for doing this. I took the book apart. I took all my Hannah Lynn books apart. Um, and to be honest as well, I don't really like the paper. I, actually, I really, really don't like the paper. So I just went ahead and bought the PDF version of the book. I think it worked out around £6 something. And for that many PDFs, I think it's an absolute bargain. I have printed it off on the smoother of the Nina paper. And I have used alcohol markers and the Artex pencils with this one. So she's all coloured in. I just realised I've missed the beak, so I'll have to do that later. <laughs> just to finish the beak off. Uh, but I thought in this video I would do the background and I'm going to attempt to use Neo Colour 2's. Now there is sort of a pattern in the background. You've got flames at the bottom and then smoke at the top. So I'm going to sort of try and stick with that and emulate what it's meant to be. And these are the colours that I've chosen. I have pulled out all of my Neo Colours all here. But I think this should be enough. I'm not going to use a reference picture for flames or anything. I'm just going to try and try and wing it a little bit. I thought I was organised. I've not got my water. So. And I don't know what this paper is like. I know the other one uh, takes the water okay. But it's not fantastic. I don't know what this paper is like. And I'm already committed now uh, to using Neo Colours. So I'm just going to go with it, go with it. I'll just quickly go over the colours that I've chosen. I think I'm gonna, just going to use these. I don't think I'm going to use any more. So I've got Flame Red, Vermilion, Orange, Scarlet, Golden Yellow, Yellow, and sepia i think i might i've got black as well i'll just pull the black out just in case i do want to use it but i'm not sure so we'll start off with the flames first start off with the lightest i could do with sharpening these but i hate sharpening them and i know that i could i could collect them um to to use them but i'm not that organized so i'm going to try and use them without without sharpening them maybe if i just use it on this side and then create a point of that that might do. Luckily it doesn't have to be completely perfect. Even if I go out the lines it normally neo colours are quite easy to uh to blend out. But I'll just try and get a a rough guide of where I want the colours to be. Once you add the water as well it's sort of I don't want to say it does its own thing because it's not really like watercolour but it's similar, similar. So it's going over all the flames. Actually, I'm going to bring you in ever so slightly. That should be a little bit better. But I've really enjoyed colouring this one. I have already coloured a lot from this book. But I think having it as a PDF version now will give me the push to actually do a few more. As much as I like the grayscale, I, th I don't think you can beat the, this particular book of Hannah Lynn's. It's really one of my favourites of hers. Hence buying a PDF copy and a physical copy. So, with the golden yellow, just put that here and there. I don't want to put as much on. As I did with the other colour. I'll try. I'm not using all of these colours on the flames. Flame red. It's a coincidence. I 
I can always make the sky blue, but I think that might clash a little bit with the the rest of the colours that I've already picked. I'm not going for a perfect realistic, it's just meant to be an easy background this. I could have just done my own thing, but I thought while the lines and everything are already there I might as well give it a go. So vermilion, let's pop some of this where I've already just put out lighter, the flame red. Um, and then what about a little bit of orange, see if that, or did I use that one, I can't remember now, I know I used flame red. I'll activate this before I move up to working on the smoke and I'll have to do the, the opposite way around because this is all smoke as well in the background. So, now that I've got all that laid down, I've got two different size aqua brushes. I'm thinking the bigger of the two might be better. So I'll start off on the left hand side because I'm right handed. And stay in lines as much as possible, but I'm not too worried if I go out of the lines. So this paper isn't too bad. I'm gonna get my brush and just wipe off the excess. I did actually pull out my palette because I might end up using that for the smoke. Just for deepening it up in certain areas. Yeah, they're really really easy and quick to activate these. I have tried cheaper brands of this sort of is it a wax crayon? Solid soluble wax crayon. And as much as they are nice, they're just not as good as these. These are the best by far. This top area. See how easy they melt away. So I'm trying to work on the lighter area first, just to blend that out, and then going into the dark bit. Activating that, and then when I get to the top where it's lightest, clean my brush off, then blend the edges out just to try and keep it as light as I can in them areas. Same with this one, so I'm activating the yellow first. Then go into the orange. The orange isn't too bad because it's so similar. I just realised I've gone over it really badly in the background, background bit there. That's what I'll be able to cover that up. So activate this flame red. I'm sure that's what the colour this was. Clean off my brush. And just blend the edges out. Curious to see how long it actually takes to dry on this paper. But so far, so good. I've gone really heavy handed there. These are probably the closest things to paints without them being paints ever. So 
I just did that in sections then. I did all the yellow in that section and I'm coming back now to do the darker colours. Yeah, like all the other things that I say, I've not used them in such a long time, but I forgot how nice they are. I believe as well last, I think it was last week. I don't know if it's still on at the minute, but Jackson Art was having a sale on. And these were in that sale. I think it was sometime last week. I'm having to go over this a couple of times because there is a lot of pavement on this side. So that'll do for now. I think, can you see that like, the details in the centre is making the flame shape? I might actually go over the top with a bit more colour pencil but once it's completely dry and do a similar thing to what I've done with the feathers. Like make it darkest at the top and then pull it down to nothing. I think that'll be nice. So for the clouds, this is where I'm a bit unsure what to do. I think mostly it's going to be dark but I'll try and do a couple of splashes of colour maybe. So I'll start off with the splashes of colour and this is golden yellow. Again, I want to try and stick to the lines but if I go out of them it's not the end of the world. By the way, if you can hear noises in the background, my neighbours are having work done and I've been putting off all morning putting, uh, doing this video. And they've recently just started again, they must have finished the dinner. So there's not really much I can do about that. It was a lot worse this morning, put it that way. I just want to put this colour on to like, sort of mimic like a highlight. I'm not expecting there to be all of this colour left once I've started blending and adding the sepia and the black. And I'll have to wait a little while before I do this bottom bit otherwise the colours will just bleed together. So which one was this one? Scarlet. I'm not putting this absolutely everywhere, just certain places. It's a good job it doesn't need to be perfect because that line is definitely not. Uh, next, the orange was it? Flame red. I think the best idea for this one is me activating this portion of it and then completely letting it dry and then going adding the darker bits. I'm a bit nervous about doing it all together in case it just bleeds together and then it just causes like a, a muddy mess and you can't really tell what it's meant to be. I mean I don't even know if you will be able to tell what it's meant to be at the end of this but that's what I'm trying. So yeah, let's uh, activate this. See how we get on. Oh, well, can you be quiet, please? Right. right, I'm not bothered about leaving too much left over because I'm gonna switch over now. 
because I'm going over with the darker colour, aren't I? So I can get away with uh, being a little bit more messer with this bit. Now, I'm not going to use the heat gun because if I do, then I might melt the glue in the masking tape. Switchy, switchy. I'm going to pull that colour actually there because I missed a bit. Oh, I, I should have used this one sooner. It's a bit more control. Yeah, I definitely should. I've completely gone out of the lines on that one, so I'll just have to make my own lines up. See if we just carry on blending. It blends out to absolutely nothing. It's brilliant. So I'm gonna have to turn it ever so slightly this way. With this being a smaller brush as well, I'm having to reload it a lot more often. It's looking good so far. I don't even know if you managed to see that, I do apologise. I feel like I'm really busty with filming at the moment. I think I'm quite happy with that. I don't imagine that should take too long, just this little bit here. Didn't activate. I don't imagine that this would take too long to dry because it's not like I've put loads and loads of water on there. You can see it's slightly buckling there, but I'll probably leave it about 15 minutes, 10 15 minutes, and then come back and check on it. That's more or less dry. I'd be quite confident to do something on that area but I know that these areas are still wet so I'll, I'll play it safe and let it completely dry before I work on the, the darker background. So I will use the sepia and the black and let me just check, I've got a couple of greys in here that might that might be alright. I don't want any light greys because I want this to be the pop of colour. So these greys, I've got grey. <laughs> Where's the name on this one? Oh dark grey. Is that the sepia? Yeah, and black. So once this is completely dry, I'll come back and uh, I think while I'm waiting, I'll carefully colour the beak. So that's the beak actually coloured. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot about that. I had to pull my pencils out and redo that. Anyway, so I've got the greys and the black so I can mute everything else out of the way. I have kept them colours out that I did just previous, previously used just in case I want to touch up any areas. I think we'll go in with the lightest grey first. I'm just going to be really really random with this. I'm trying not to put my arm in that wet paint there. Right, as you've seen they blend out really really nicely. 
So I'm not going to put loads and loads of colour on. I'll do it section by section actually. Then we'll try a bit of sepia. Sepia. And then instead of going straight on with the black, I'm actually going to put the black on the actual Caran d'Ache palette. See if that's enough. Pop some water. I've just add my pipette. Where have I put it? Over next to the font. Three drops should do it. So I think I'm gonna stick with eat with the smaller brush, even though it's a larger area. I think I just prefer this size brush. Just make sure that it is really, really damp the brush. And just do the same thing as what I did with the orange. Oh and I've got my cloth. Just don't want any harsh lines. If you've used Neocolor before, if you're not quick enough, it does leave some nasty lines. Just want to make sure that I'm getting every single one. And then I'll go ahead with the black once I've actually blended out the whole thing. Careful around here, especially near her. I don't want to spoil that to me edges. <laughs> you see that I'm turning the paper as well, it's because I want to get to the very tip of where it's dark. Because if I did that here, it'd just be dark all day. I want to try and keep that as light as possible. Now that that's mostly activated, there's a couple of areas. I'm going to activate this black. Give it all a good mix around. And then while the paper is still damp, just dab it in certain areas. It's not going to be mega dark. I mean, I could add more pigment. But if I think if I build it up, that might look a little bit better than it just being dark straight away. And I think that's probably enough. So if I just clean my brush off and then just blend them edges out, I think that's as much as I can get away with with this paper because I'm noticing that it's starting to do that pill, pill, pilling, and that's what they call it. So let's start off here and do the exact same thing all over. I think we'll mix it up, we'll go with that, that grey there and then this sepia up here and same thing again taking off any excess that I don't want and trying to be mindful of a hair That's another benefit of using a PDF. I think, I mean, you could do this with a colouring book, but it'd be a lot more hassle moving the whole book instead of just one page. So while that's still wet, let's pick some of that black up. Just to deepen it up ever so slightly. See, it's not like really intense. That's not the point of what I wanted, I just wanted to deepen it up, just slightly.
And that is her done. Last thing that I want to do is just remove the masking tape. I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm hoping. I think I'm going to deepen this up a little bit, just with a, a little bit of pencil. Well, it's the, the masking tape from Rip All it, it wants. Don't rip the paper. masking tape on and I think it looks pretty neat I didn't want to go too overboard with that background right I've got my pencils just here I've just stuck with the same pencils that I've used all the way through the uh, text ones now I don't know if I mentioned but I use the Ohuhu markers uh, I want a lighter orange I don't want it to be too dark so just plain orange <laughs> just plain orange will do but you can see where these lines are I'm just gonna gonna blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna gonna I'm going to go down just a little bit on each of them just to define them a little bit and I might pick a, a red shade just to go over the top. I just think it might add a little bit of extra detail in. I don't think I've got I've got some gold stickles that I might be able to use on a dress maybe. needs to be this way. Got slightly confused then. Oh, actually I think I'm just gonna leave it there. I don't think I'm gonna bother adding a darker shade but I will pull out that stickles that I've got. I've got two that might work. Well oh, three technically. I've got starburst, copper and rose gold. So we'll try the copper first. Try it on the back of my hand just make sure it's not blocked. Nope, we're good to go. Uh, let me think about this. Where do I want it? Let's see if I can just decorate the inside of these shapes a little bit and spread the colour out. Instead of using the rose gold because the rose gold is very very similar to this copper shade. I'll try the starburst. I'll lift it up to the camera when I've finished and do this centre one. Check on the back of my hand first. Yep, we're good to go. I always check first because I've done this before and it's completely just spotted everywhere. Just move it around a little bit and that will dry. When I lift it up now you'll see that it's lumped up a bit but once it's dry it'll dry more or less flat but it just adds a little bit of sparkle to a dress. Um, yeah, I think I'll leave it as that. I'm quite happy with that, the end result. I think it's it's quite nice and it's just, it's easy to do. I know I had the lines there, but you could easily draw the lines in yourself. It's a couple of squiggly lines for the clouds and some basic flames at the bottom. So you could add this to your other colouring pages if you wanted to. But thank you so much for watching. If you've got any tips, then please do leave me a like or if you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.